So this is about establishing a presence with a class you don't know, maybe a class you don't like, maybe a class you're covering for someone else, which is the thing that lots of us used to worry about the most. At King Edward VI School in Suffolk, head teacher Jeff Barton is helping new and trainee teachers develop what he calls the micro skills of the effective teacher, invaluable for taking the class you've never met. Once you arrive to a classroom, particularly if it's with a group you don't know, then it becomes more difficult if they're already in the classroom. And quite often, if you're doing supply or cover or you're going into a, another person's lesson as a favour to them, that will be the case. So if you're going in to cover a tutor group or to cover a class, if it's a room like this, which is too hot or too light, doesn't matter what it is, you change the territory. So we would open the door with confidence, walk in, say good morning, bags on the floor, please everyone. Do you mind just opening that window for me a little bit? And What's your name? Paige. Can you just turn one of those lights off, please? It's too light in here and we're saving electricity. And then pens down. Can you just do that? Pens down. And let's have your attention this way. Human beings have perfected the art of listening whilst holding pens. But what good teachers do is they have little symbols. And all that is symbolising is now, this is my territory. I'm in command. You watch the best people doing assemblies, for example, they will not be standing right far back. They will make sure they're here where they engage. And in my case, I will invade your body space slightly. The weaker the teacher, the less they will be around the place. The ineffective teacher tends to stand too far back. They stand way behind where they need to, often with their back to the wall or behind a desk. Uh, they sometimes have a desk there as a barrier between them and the class. They sometimes hold things, uh, again, as a barrier with the class. And, and in the most extreme cases, they might as well have a badge saying victim because they're sending out all the messages that they're afraid of the group. But one of the really important things, I think, is to be mobile. And what that means is that sometimes what you're going to do is to say, just have a look at this stuff on the board here. Okay? I'm going to do some reading out now. I want you to follow it in your book, and then you're going to answer those questions. Right? So have a look at page 72 now, and you follow along. And if you're reading stuff out, being at the back of the classroom is a really good place to be, because students don't know whether you're looking at them. Okay? Um, it means you're breaking down the no-go areas that you can get in the classroom, which is going to almost certainly be the back or the back side areas, if you forgive the expression. But I do think that for certain strategic bits of the lesson, explaining from the back or standing at the side or saying, I just want to watch what you've learnt now so I'm not going to talk at all, right? And I'm going to stand there and you're going to demonstrate that you've understood it, OK? Do you know what you do? And I'm just going to stand here and watch you. Right? And there is, I don't know what it is with me, there's a kind of menace, isn't there, about, about the way I teach, I think, in some ways. But it does keep people on the toes because you never quite know where he's going to be next. Uh, getting a class quiet is something that people uh, worry about and in my experience they are too quick to give up on it. One of the problems is if you've just set them a group task or they're in there talking and so on, how do you get their attention? Because there's nothing more humiliating than hearing teachers kind of shouting, be quiet, stop talking and kind of um, degrading themselves in the process. Some kind of clue which is both visual but also aural I think is the way in which you get their attention. But it needs to be followed by a determination that you will not start until they are absolutely quiet. For me, I mean, you, you come up with your own, but what I would probably do with most classes now is say, right, thanks, everyone. We'll stop talking now and look this way. Thank you. You're going to be looking this way? Thank you. And you can see, all I'm going to do is I'm going to absolutely stand here until everyone is looking this way and listening. One of the questions we ask people on interview is this one. <clears throat> You're teaching a new Year 10 class. You've started to introduce the lesson and introduce yourself. And a girl at the back of the room has started to tap her pen on the radiator. What do you do? And it's a good question. And I was asked it when I was interviewed for my first NQT job. And what we see from people is that they sometimes allow things to escalate really quickly. And what they do is they start saying, put your pen down now. And they, they get a conflict 
which gets them really quickly into calling senior management to come and get a kid out of their lesson because they tapped a pen on a radiator. So what we'd say is have a really clear, um, staggered set of ways you respond to things. And it might be that if a student is tapping the pen on the radiator, you simply stop and you use silence. At what point does a student make a decision about whether a teacher is any good or not? Body language, I think, would be a key one for a bad teacher. I mean, if you walk into a classroom with somebody you've never had before and they're sat at their desk, hunched over their computer, typing away, that just immediately gives the impression that they're detached from you as a class. Non-verbal signs are going to be really important in teaching and sometimes you will want to kind of up the ante a little bit with those. I would probably use pointing gestures from time to time, but I would certainly be using the hands in a way which I'm hoping gives the emphasis to what I'm saying. And notice the other thing which I'll do, and I'd recommend it to all teachers, is you use your hands to make yourself bigger. It gives you authority, so that it's a bit messianic, isn't it? But nevertheless, I would definitely, when I'm talking, be doing gestures like that, so that we're identifying that I'm now kind of in charge. I would want to make sure I am making eye contact across the range of the group because there will be students on the periphery who are sitting on the periphery for a reason and it's to avoid the eye contact with the teacher and therefore although it can be fairly robotic and I'm told in my style it's fairly robotic I will simply make sure I am looking right the way round and, and constantly doing it. The more you go and watch teachers at work whether they're good or they're not so good what you'll notice is that what it comes down to is not their subject knowledge it's where they stand, how they stand how they make eye contact, how they use their voice, how they praise, how they switch on lights, how they open windows, and all of that kind of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, they are our micro skills. Thank you.